Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, so we are basically looking at another session of Patrick Parshala. We'll be starting in some time. Yeah, so we start, uh, there's still three, four minutes left. So we'll start in three, four minutes. If you have any queries before that, you can please ask, uh, feel free to ask uh, regarding anything. Uh, so today, basically we are doing something on substitution. Important concept, we'll be looking at some questions from CAT, some questions from IBMAT uh, exam. So the whole focus will be on substitution today. How to substitute some questions on how to apply and then go away. Yeah, as I said, if you have any query, feel free to ask and then we can start. So we have a couple of more minutes left. We will start in another two minutes uh, and then we can look at it. Uh, aptitude examinations are not really difficult exams. I mean, you can easily crack the examination if you use the right technique to solve the sums. The question is and the key is to use the right technique. If you're able to use the right technique, you'll be able to do sums quickly and which will help you to score more marks. In the end, it's all about speed, how fast you're going to be able to solve. If you're able to solve it fast, you'll be doing well in the exam. If not, you will not be able to do well in the exam. So the key is the simple techniques and methods that are required as far as cracking the exam is concerned. And if you can go with that, that would help you a lot. Right, so today, there is a simple technique which is there which helps to solve things faster called substitution. We will be focusing on that technique substitution basically again uh, focus on any aptitude examination. It could be useful like CAT, CT, NMAT, SNAP, any management entrance exam, any IPMAT, BBA entrance exam, any banking exams. So these techniques are normally useful for all the uh, uh, basically all type of aptitude examinations. So and that's how it could help. Mm -hmm. So we'll start in another minute, uh, when it becomes 30 we will start. How many questions per topic should we practice for? Um, there is no specific number as such. Uh, you can practice uh, maybe even if you're comfortable with a topic already, even a 20 or 30 questions will suffice. So minimum 20, 30 questions per topic. But yes, if you're not comfortable with a topic, then it makes sense to solve more number of questions to be comfortable. Maybe more than 50, 50 to 100 questions is what you can look at. Depending on the time available to you, depending on when you start, depending on the difficult level of questions that you take it up, it will depend on all those factors. Fine, we will start with the questions. As I said, today's focus will be substitution, where we can substitute values. These are normally used when you have variables in the questions. So normally I say that if you have variables in the question like a, b, c, x, y, uh, then you can substitute any value. Okay, you can substitute any value as long as it satisfies the constraint. The key is that it will satisfy any constraint given to you. Normally you have one type, one such question in every paper, and if you know the technique, it obviously helps you to solve things faster. Let's look at okay. This is a cat 19 question. Okay, let's look at how to solve or how to use a technique in a cat sub. Just try to solve this on your own and then try to put the answer in the chat box. Now, if you look at it, these are all variables. Last value is a n plus a n plus one variable is equal to answers are also in n. The simplest value I can put is I can put n equal to 1. Always substitute values. So if I'm putting some values, the simplest value you can substitute is n equal to 1. If I substitute n equal to 1, last term becomes root of a1, n equal to 1, plus root of a2, which is also the first term. That means there's only one term which is there. If I put n equal to 1, you will get a term as 1 upon root of a1 plus a2, right, which is also the first term. Look at the options, put n equal to 1 and see where you get 1 upon a1 plus a2. So if you look at a option, you get 1 upon root of a1 plus a2. 
B option you get zero, so not possible. C option you get answer root of one upon a one minus a two. No, B one a one plus a two. B option again is zero, not possible. The only option possible A option that gives you one upon root of a one plus a two. That is the answer. Not a difficult concept. A very simple concept if you understand it. A lot of people unfortunately are not comfortable with variables and therefore they find it difficult. But otherwise, it's a simple concept of substituting simple values for the variables. So as I said, instead of solving the whole thing, just put simple value of n equal to one in the whole equation. So we get last value as root of a one plus a two one upon. First of all, so that means only one term. If there's only one term. That means my answer has to be one upon root of a one plus a two. Look at the option for n equal to one and see where you get one upon root of a one plus a two. You realize that only a option gives you root of one upon root of a one plus a two. That will be the answer. So this is a cat nineteen sum. If you know the technique, you can solve it immediately in no time. Though the sum looks very daunting, very difficult, technically it's a very simple sum. This is sort of an application for that similar type of sum. Okay, sort of an application. So whenever there is no none of these or cannot be determined, you can always substitute values and check out any value. Find an for any integer n or the HCF. Put n equal to one. Simple value. Okay, put n equal to one and check out. If I put n equal to one, what do you get? HCF of twenty nine and forty three. Which is one. So you can directly mark the answer B as one. Okay, you get HCF of twenty nine and forty three. HCF of twenty nine and forty three is one. Now ideally you should get the answer, but obviously obviously n also satisfies. Look at n equal to one also satisfies. If there are two values that satisfy, in this case there are two options satisfies. Put n equal to two and check out. Put one more value. Normally in this case when you put two values, you will obviously get the answer. So n equal to two, you get forty four plus seven forty nine. And sixty-six plus ten, seventy-six. It's if again you get one. So you put n equal to one or n equal to two, you get one always. At n equal to one, both a and b option satisfies. At n equal to two, only b option satisfies. So you can make out the answer will be b option. Okay. Normally, first one, first one value doesn't satisfy. Put one more value and check out. You get the answer when you put two values. Definitely. If you put two values, you will definitely get the answer. Catch them again. Simple. Now here you have a constraint. Same concept, same thing. Uh, your variables are there. Substitute values for the variable. But there is a constraint called P Q R equal to one. So whenever you have a constraint, substitute simple value for the constraint. What you can do? One into one into one equal to one. That is simplest value you can substitute. One into one into one equal to one. Now you should know obviously one raised to minus one is equal to one. Now put P as one. Q as one and R as one. P equal to Q equal to R equal to one because it satisfies this constraint. That's the simplest value you can substitute. Put it out here. So you can you can put any other value also. I'm not saying that you have to put one one one. You can put two half and one also. But uh, one 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 will give you ease of calculation. The calculation will be easier. So we substitute one one one. Substitute out here one plus one plus one. One plus one plus one. One plus one plus one because each of these values will be one, one, and one because one ratio minus one also is one. So you get one upon three plus one upon three plus one upon three, which gives you one. C option, right? So whenever you have variables in the question, so you can always substitute simple value for the variable and try to get the answer. So here the simplest value you can substitute is one, one, and one. The moment you substitute one, 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 so you know one into one into one is equal to one. Substitute the expression. You simply get one upon three plus one upon three plus one upon three, which gives you one. The so option only option A option gives you one plus one plus one, which is three. B option gives you one upon three. C option also gives you one plus one plus one three. The only option that gives you one is C option. Remember that. You have to substitute all options and check out. The only option that gives you one is the C option. That will be the answer in this case. Right. I hope it's clear. Yeah. We'll go to next exam. Again, this is from the IMAT exam.
again variables that we notice x can be between 0 and 1 and here x can be between minus 1 and 0 the equation is same on right hand side so substitute simple value let's say x is put as 0 0.5 if i put x as 0 0.5 for the first two the left hand side will be 1 upon 1 plus 0 0.5 which is 2 upon 3 right hand side will be 1 minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 square that becomes 0 0.75 so you can make out the right hand side is bigger than left hand side which means the one is true and second is false first option is true second option is false second option you can put minus 0 0.5 between 0 and minus 1 so you put minus 0 0.5 substitute x equal to minus 0 0.5 you'll get 1 upon 1 minus 0 0.5 Right hand side will get 1 minus of minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 the whole square. This becomes 2. Here it becomes 1 plus 0.5 plus 0.5 square, which is 1.75. So here left hand side is bigger than right hand side. Which means fourth is true, third is false. So answer is 1 and 4. C option. Fourth is true, third is false, answer is 1 and 4. The concept remains the same the way you solve. You have to just substitute simple values to get the answer. In the first case, because it is between 0 and 1, we substitute 0 0.5 and check out. Once you substitute 0 0.5, you get a value as 2 upon 3, which is 0 0.66 and 0 0.75. So right hand side is bigger than left hand side. So you put 0.5 in this equation x. So which is first is true, second is false, because right hand side is bigger than left hand side. The second case, third and fourth option, you put minus 0 0.5. You'll get left hand side 2, right hand side 1.75. So left hand side is bigger. So it means fourth is true, third is false. So automatically 1 and 4 are true. You will get the answer as C option. Similar concept as what we did. Variables that are PQR. Again, constraint is given a consecutive natural numbers. So substitute simple values. What you can substitute? P1, Q2, R1, 3. Consecutive natural numbers. Check out. So 5 raised to 1 minus 1. That is M. 5 raised to 1 plus 1. 5 raised to 2 plus 1, sorry. And 5 Q plus 1. N becomes 5 raised to 1 plus 1. 5 is to 2 plus 1, 5 is to 3 plus 1. You can make out that one of them is a multiple of 6. 5 plus 1 is a multiple of 6. So n into m when you divide by 6, the remainder will be 0. n into m when you divide by 6, the remainder automatically becomes 0. So a option is the answer. Right? So if you look at the whole sum, basically what happens is find out m, find out m. So we use simple values for PQR. P1, Q2, R3. So when you substitute it, you will get M and N equation. If you multiply M and N, you will realize that there is one value which is 6 here. Right? If it is 6, so automatically it is a multiple of 6. The whole number is a multiple of 6. The whole number is a multiple of 6 N into M. So when you divide by 6, remainder is 0. Since there is no option called cannot be determined, you can directly mark 0 and go forward. That will be the answer in this case. The end of question of IP mat exam. Okay, end of the question IP mat exam. Normally the questions are similar in different exam. I mean you will have questions from one exam going to the other. Again, geometry I will draw it. So peak A B C D is a square. PQRS are points. Okay. PQRS are points such that it divides the whole line in the ratio 1 to n. So let me take 1 to 2. Okay. You can take 1 to 1 also sometime, but 1 to 1 will give multiple answers which is the same answers in the option. 1 to 2 is a safer option to go. 1 to 2. So if I take a ratio 1 is to 2, we hold 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. 
So look at A B C D is a square of side three. A B C D is a square of side three. So area becomes three square. P Q R S is a square of side root five because if you look at if I want P Q by Pythagoras theorem, P Q is equal to root of two square plus one square, which becomes root five. So P Q R is side of root five. Square, so area becomes five. So we get the answer as ratio as five is to nine. So we get the answer in the ratio of five is to nine. Now look at the option. Which option gives you five is to nine? If you look at the first option. It is one is to two, one is to three. I put n equal to two, right? One is to three. Second option, one is to two. Third option, one plus. Two square and one plus two the whole square, which is five is to nine satisfies. So it satisfies. Fourth is three is to five. No, so only five is to nine satisfies. Third option. So third is the answer. Yeah, which is is possible to score one fifty plus if scoring sixty seventy right now. Right techniques techniques are very important. If you I have the right techniques, you can solve. So here I just put n equal to two and just solve. Once you put n equal to two and just substitute and get the answer, becomes easy. This is a theta question. Now, what have we given? Suppose A, B, C are real numbers greater than one. They say real numbers greater than one. That's the constraint given to you. Nothing else is mentioned. If nothing else is mentioned, I can always assume value. So here I can assume simple A, B. C. I can't assume one because it has to be more than one. So I can assume A, B, C is two. They have not said it has to be distinct. They have not mentioned it. So I can assume equal value. Substitute one upon one plus log of eight two upon two. Now you should know obviously log of one is zero. This becomes one upon one plus zero or one. Same as sec second one upon one plus log of eight two upon two two upon two is one. And log of one is zero, so it becomes one upon one plus zero, which is one. Same with the last one, one. You will get the answer three. You can directly mark the answer three without much thinking. You can calculate. There's a way to calculate. Take a longer time. The idea is the technique should be right. The technique out here is say put simple values for the variables. The moment I put simple value for A, B, C, which is the simplest value out here is two, two, two. Okay, A could be equal to C, which is two, and substitute. We'll get one upon one plus zero, one upon one plus zero, one upon one plus zero. It means one plus one plus one. We'll get the answer as three. I hope this is clear. So these are techniques that can be used for different exam. If you can use for different exam, that will definitely help you with regards to the examination perspective. I hope this helps. Uh, Vishesh, uh, I am reading for two hours daily and enjoying that also. But accuracy in VRC is still stuck at fifty percent. Okay, good that you are enjoying. Now maybe try to diversify your reading to maybe reading different articles. You start with enjoying your reading, but over a period of time you should try to diversify your reading. And it will take some time to improve your, you know, accuracy in verbal RCs. But yes, key is to enjoy reading. It will help. Fine. Now okay, we wind up here. Good night. See you in the next session. Next week, same time, Thursday at nine thirty.